Welcome back everyone. My name is Larry Laux. I'm a senior SE at Vision Corps. In this set of videos, we're talking about how virtualization impacts systems administration and management. In this particular segment, we want to focus on CPU utilization. So in this example on the board we're, here, we have a, or we're representing a server with four processors in it. And recall that in the non-virtual space, if I had uh, that same type configuration, I would have a single operating system there with applications with those four available cores. When we virtualize now, if I have 20 or 30 VMs on this particular box, they have to share those four available cores. Now, it amazes me every week I talk to people and, and, and sometimes customers don't realize that virtual machines are not all running on a processor at the same time. But if you, if you think about this, it should be kind of intuitive, right? If you have four cores available and you have 20 single vCPU VMs on the box, in other words, a VM that's been assigned a single processor, it should make sense that they can't all be running at the same time because we only have four cores. And so what ESX Server does is move VMs onto processor as they need it and take them back off of processor. It's called CPU scheduling. The VMs are moved onto processor, take it back off, placed on and off again. It all happens very quickly, of course, at the millisecond level. So it's to human eyes, it looks like they're all running together, but they're really not. Now, when a virtual machine is not on a processor, it's effectively paused or suspended. Uh, it literally can't do anything during that space of time. Now, we are talking about millisecond level, but I want to show you guys today how important it is to understand how VMs are scheduled to processor so that you can better manage the environment. So we're going to use these uh, little cards here. We have a couple of uh, single vCPU VMs, and we have a VM out here that requires two CPUs. And so just in the course of the day, as ESX is scheduling its work, we'll say that these virtual machines here, these single vCPU VMs, were scheduled onto processor. And during this particular slice of time, this dual vCPU VM also needs access to processor. Now, one of the rules with ESX server scheduling VMs to processors is that a multi vCPU VM can't be scheduled at all unless all of the processors are available at the same time. Once again, if you think about it, it should be intuitively obvious why this is the case. If I have a VM that the guest OS is being told you have two CPUs, we'll just say it's a Windows server, right? I can't suddenly go, oh, I've got one core here and give this VM one core. The OS, the guest OS inside the VM expects to see two cores and it has to have all that available at the same time or it can't be scheduled at all. So during this particular instance of time, if this dual vCPU VM need to be scheduled, uh, it can't be. There's not two cores available. So this VM, unfortunately, has to wait. Now this creates what's called CPU ready values in VMware. The VM is ready for a processor, but it's unable to be scheduled on one. And as you would imagine, any significant amount of this in the environment and the performance on this VM is going to go down very quickly because the VM is paused. Of course, it doesn't stop requests from coming to the ESX box from the users and things like that, other demands in the environment, but the VM can't do anything about it because it doesn't have a processor right now. So of course, you know, given some milliseconds of time, perhaps this VM gets migrated off a core. Now I can schedule this VM because we have two available cores. So here's how this can create problems in virtual environments. Most companies, when they virtualize, will go through and they'll do what I call the low-hanging fruit first. They'll virtualize the easy stuff, DHCP servers, DNS servers, Active Directory, you know, things that are relatively low utilization anyway. And they do this until they get a handle on the environment, kind of comfortable with managing the virtual infrastructure. Um, and then after some time, usually the companies will begin and begin to migrate more critical applications. SQL servers, exchange servers, critical application servers, and things like that. Now, what happens a lot of times is they'll migrate these things over uh, to the virtual environment, and now they have performance issues that they can't troubleshoot and explain. I want to give you an example of that today. So here at Vision Core, I had a customer, and I've seen, by the way, this same problem in many virtual environments during my time at VMware and at Vision Core. Um, but I'll give you an example from a customer last year. So customer virtualizes and they did exactly what I described. They did the low hanging fruit first. They had dual socket, dual core servers in their environment, by the way, which would give us exactly what you see on the board here, four core uh, per server environment. And they begin to do P to V migrations and migrate things over from the non-virtual space onto the ESX servers. Now, pretty much any server you've bought in the last five years is probably at least a dual socket server, uh, if not more. And when we P2V migrate those things over, by default, a lot of times customers will just bring those over exactly as they are. So if it was a dual socket server over here, it's dual socket over in the virtual world, quad socket over here, quad socket in the virtual world, and so on. Now the reality is most of our non-virtual servers are running at very low utilization anyway. So this can be very wasteful. If I have a dual socket server that's running Windows in the DHCP service, you know, that box would probably with one processor only run at like one or two percent utilization. To bring that over into a virtual environment with a dual vCPU setup, right, is just a waste of resources because of scheduling issues. 
So what this customer found is he had some critical systems that he had migrated over to the virtual environment, some SQL boxes actually, and they weren't performing very well. He would look at the uh, ESX utilization in Virtual Center, and vCenter said that it was running at about you know 60% utilization. It was moderate utilization on the ESX server, but still plenty of horsepower left. But you go inside of the virtual machine, and Task Manager and Windows and other tools he had showed that the VM was at 80 to 100 percent utilization. Absolutely pegged utilization for the users, or um, performance rather for the users, very, very poor. So what was happening in this customer's environment is they had mixed single, dual, and quad vCPU VMs on the same four core boxes. This creates a scheduling problem, potentially, depending on your utilization levels. So ESX is running along, for example, and it would like to, this dual vCPU VM would like to be scheduled, but right now it can't be because there's only one core available. And of course, if we have quad vCPU VMs, well, now the problem is exacerbated more because if I have a quad vCPU VM, you know, maybe this VM gets pulled off of processor. I've got two available now, right? I could schedule this one, but still the quad proc VM can't be scheduled. I have to have four cores available simultaneously. And of course, with a low core density server like this, it's going to be pretty tough to grab four processors all at the same time if that box is running at moderate utilization levels. So this is an example of how we can have CPU scheduling problems that show up uh, at, a, at a first glance as uh, CPU utilization issues in the virtual machine that aren't reflected in the virtual infrastructure. This can be a lot of fun to troubleshoot if you don't understand this stuff. So that wraps up some tech tips of the week for CPU scheduling and ESX server. Hopefully this has been helpful to all of you guys. If you'd like to check out uh, some information on how vFoglight can help you not only see this, but avoid this problem in your environment, check out our website at visioncore.com. And in our next video segment, we're going to talk about storage and how ESX server works with that.